Just a few days to go before the UN-led climate talks wrap up in Egypt. And the push is on to reach some sort of agreement on issues ranging from adaptation and mitigation to loss and damage compensation. Well, CNA's Julie Yu spoke earlier with Thailand's Natural Resources and Environment Minister to get his perspective on where things stand. Thailand is very vulnerable to uh, climate change and we have 67 million people. Some of them are very fragile group of people. Our farmers, um, you know, they are at the bottom of the uh, Maslow Triangle, basically. We have to protect them. We have to look out for them. So the, not just mitigation that we have to look at, but the adaptation, make sure that they can live through various events that Mother Nature throws at us, be it floods, drought, wildfire, etc. They have to be ready, and it's the government's job to look after them. Uh, where does Thailand stand on loss and damage, and what are you realistically expecting on this front? We totally agree with loss and damage fund. Now, Thailand, despite the fact that we produce that much of the greenhouse gas, about 0.8% of the global greenhouse gas, uh, we are ranked number 22 on the emission scale, but on the other scale, we are ranked number 9 the scale of the country that's being affected by climate change. So yes, we are in total support of loss and damage fund, but one needs to bear in mind that the developed countries at the moment have a commitment for the long-term finance of 100 billion US dollars. And until today, I don't think that has been fulfilled yet. So I don't want to run before I can walk. Mr. Thailand has joined the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People. Uh, why was it important for Thailand to join that group? And how does your country plan to further implement nature-based solutions uh, to tackle climate change? We have over 1% of the global land area. But it has been proven. I think IUCN proved it, and um, they proved that Thailand has about 10% of the global biodiversity. So despite the land area, we have this much, but we have this much of biodiversity. So if anyone appreciates the biodiversity and the advantage of it, it's us. So that is why we joined the HAC, and that is why we cherish what we have and the abundance that we have. We use organic, organic materials in order to help farmers grow their crops, their plants in a healthier way and healthier for the environment. We plan to increase our green areas in, in the country up to 55% according to our 20 years national strategy. Um, of that 55%, 35% will be uh, uh, a natural uh, natural, um, natural forest. 15% is the economic forest and the remaining five is the, uh, the urban area. So we have all sort of facilities at our hands. We just need to execute it and with HAC we are going to execute it. Minister, what are you hoping to see emerge from COP27 as tangible and practical outcomes and deliverables? I want to see actions from all countries from LDC, from the DC, the developed countries, from everyone. Put your action where your word is, put the money where your promise is. In Thailand, we never promise on empty, we never go on empty promise. We deliver and we walk the talk.